Hi, today I'm going to talk about a topic that I frequently get questions about, and that is related to how do you know if a material behaves in a linear or nonlinear viscoelastic way? How can you find that out? And uh, can you figure it out by simply looking at the stress strain curve? So here's some true stress, true strain data for CPVC in uniaxial tension, different strain rates, cyclic loading. Is this material linear viscoelastic? Well, it's, it's not always easy to tell, but in this case, we can see that it's actually undergoing plasticity uh, when it's being deformed. So a material that undergoes permanent deformation or plasticity is not linear viscoelastic. So the answer here is no for this example. But how about this one? This is a silicone rubber, uniaxial tension, three different strain rates, some cyclic and uh, loading, unloading curves. Is this material linear viscoelastic? Could you use a linear viscoelastic material model here? Again, it's hard to tell. It's actually not that easy to use a stress strain curve to decide this. In this case, but looking at the curves, you, you could see, if you think about it a little bit, that clearly is a significant uh, Mullins damage in this material. And uh, that's, that's one observation. We see some strain rate dependence too. So perhaps this material is linear viscoelastic but we can't tell from this data. This data is not good enough to make that determination. How about this case? What if we have a DMA frequency sweep data? So this is storage modulus and loss modulus as a function of frequency. If this is the data that you have for a material, yeah, then in that case, you can definitely use linear viscoelasticity, but it doesn't prove that the material is linear viscoelastic if you did some other experiment. It just shows that this data can be matched to a linear viscoelastic material. We may need more information to determine if the material itself is a, a linear viscoelastic in its response. So we can't actually say specifically that the material is linear viscoelastic because it depends on the conditions. We can say that under certain conditions, a material may behave in a viscoelastic, linear viscoelastic way. So back to our main question, how do we then determine if a material is linear or nonlinear viscoelastic? And there is one very good way to determine that. And that comes back to the definition of linear viscoelasticity, which is based on Boltzmann's superposition principle. So Boltzmann said that each loading step makes an independent contribution to the final state. And that's the foundation of linear viscoelasticity. We can use this definition to come up with specific experiments that directly tell us if a material will behave in a linear viscoelastic way or not. And one way to show that is method one here. So I take my specimen and I pull on it to a strain. I basically apply a quick jump in strain and I hold the strain constant. What will happen is, of course, the stress will go up very rapidly and then start relaxing over time. If I do this test like this, it doesn't tell me if this is linear viscoelastic or not. Any viscoelastic material can match, uh, a viscoelastic material can match this data. We haven't proven that the material itself is linear viscoelastic. What we can do though, and here's the trick, we do another experiment. We double, for example, the strain in the strain jump. So we go up to twice that strain and we hold the strain constant on the same material, a different specimen of the same material, and we measure the stress response as a function of time. If, in this case, um, when we double the strain, the stress also doubles, not only initially, but for every time afterwards. If the stress whole stress curve doubles when we double the strain, then the material will be linear viscoelastic in its response. So that's a quick test you can do in a test machine to see if this is the case. Uh, you can say in this case that the material is linear viscoelastic up to this strain to epsilon zero. So that's one way to measure this. Often what it turns out that if strains are really small, then the material tend to be linear viscoelastic. And then as the strains increase in magnitude, you tend to be more and more likely becoming nonlinear viscoelastic. So this is a method that you can use for this purpose. There's another type of experiment also that can give you this information about if a material is linear or nonlinear viscoelastic, and that is a DMA test. So if you do a DMA experiment and you measure the storage and loss modulus as a function of strain amplitude. So here's a figure that shows storage modulus as a function of strain amplitude. Due to the Boltzmann superposition idea, if we do independent contributions to this final stress, then 
we see that this storage module should be independent of strain amplitude. In my example here, it seems like it's pretty much independent of strain amplitude up to close to 1% strain. So if the strains in this case are less than about 1%, this specific material will behave in a linear viscoelastic manner. Of course, we should also check the loss modulus. But that's kind of the idea, doing a strain amplitude sweep. So to summarize, a material is not really inherently linear or nonlinear viscoelastic. It may behave in a linear viscoelastic way under certain conditions, if the strains are small, for example. And there are these types of stress relaxation creep or DMA strain type experiments that you can use to determine if your material will behave in a linear viscoelastic way before you start selecting and calibrating material models. If you have any questions on this, you can ask them below.